Hey, I'm Kathleen Gamer. Welcome back to Tennis Manager. It's episode 76. We're at the Toronto 900 level tournament and we are now already into the semifinals. We've knocked off Osaka for, I don't know how many, the umpteenth time by this point. All of the top players are here though, so it is a pretty competitive semifinal with, well, the top three players in the world all qualifying Mugwe with a couple of upsets along the way knock it off the four seed the six seed to get to the semifinals great performance from her but you figure andrisku might be a little bit too much 19th all-time meeting against switek and we've still only managed to win four but that is also still a significantly better record than we had against her where we were what like one in 12. it, it has gotten better it has definitely gotten better and here it got better to an extent, we won the first set 6-0, but then we lose 4-6, 4-6 to get knocked out on this one. We did have more total winners. We had fewer unforced errors. Uh, service wasn't great for us. We had more points won. We really should have won. Technically, we did win more games. I mean, we had 14 games won to her 12. We just lost the match following week brings us to another 900 level tournament now in Cincinnati for this one. Montgomery had to play Prepa Ova in the second round, knocked her off 6-2, 6-2. Had to play Kasenseva in the third round, won that in three sets. Kasenseva already has dropped to 12th in the rankings after we got her all the way up to, what was it, like 6th place? She's fallen off quite a bit since leaving the team. She knocked off Radicanu in three sets. Uh, Radicanu definitely had a chance on that one, but it was back and forth with dominating set victories. Or 6-1, and then 2-6, and then 6-2 for Gossan Save on her path through there. Montgomery would have been playing Osaka again, but Osaka has been knocked off. But meanwhile, we're going to have a difficult semifinal. Uh, and the other end of the bracket is looking pretty tough too, so... Once again, the 900 level tournaments, less pressure for the opposition. They seem to perform better. We seem to perform similarly either way, I, but with less pressure on them, they're better in these tournaments. Maybe that's why we seem to struggle in the 900 and 1000 level tournaments. We don't perform anywhere near as well. We've had, what, one total victory where we have three Grand Slams, and then you look at the records of you know some of those top contenders and they've got tons of 900 and thousand level victories and only a couple grand slams in their career obviously the only two players that really give us a hard time these days are switek and andrisku so having switek knocked off certainly helps us out former number one is our opponent she was a long time number one and somehow this is only the fifth time that they've gone head to head and at 31, she really shouldn't have dropped this far in the rankings at this stage. Wow. Okay, well, we've lost, but what a match. This went to near infinite number of, of tiebreakers. We lose both sets 6-7, both go into the tiebreak. The first one was your standard tiebreaker, five points for us before losing it but 16 on the second one we were very much in a refuse to lose but ultimately came out just short i mean if we win two more points the whole way it's dead even at 50 50 in terms of total points won we had a half dozen winners more than her on four stairs was five more than her Service stats were similar. We were actually better on our first serves. So trying to find some sort of statistical standpoint where we actually lost this thing, because as you look up and down, it's really even throughout now. She's definitely got a stronger serve in terms of power, but service numbers, nothing jumps out at you in the serve, meaning we dealt with her power just fine. But in terms of the rallies, this is where I see a difference. Short rallies, which was the majority, that was on us. We won 63 
out of the 114, 55% of those. But the longer it went on, the more it favored her. Medium and long rallies were strongly in her favor out of 60 points that went to those. She won 36 of them. So we only got 24 out of 60. That was where we lost this match. Now, why longer rallies aren't good for us, where shorter rallies are, I don't know. Maybe our opponents have a chance. And I've seen this in our live matches where opponents have a tendency to get us running and we don't do a great job of getting them running unless we do it early on. Great week for the team here. So much green across the board. Not massive tournaments. 280 pro tournament, 300 junior tournament. But we got a finals win, a finals loss, semi-finals appearances, I think head-to-head -head where we kind of knocked each other out. Really good uh, week heading into the U.S. Open. Here's how our shape is at this stage as we enter the U.S. Open. So we've got everybody in top form physically. We have everyone in excellent shape. And morale is beaming for everybody except Prepova, who's happy. So we're really good in that department. I now have the entirety of the, the, the proper pro team, all of them, are 28th and above in the rankings. Of course, Montgomery leading the way at number three and where she was at a significant gap to the top two after winning back-to-back -back Grand Slams. She has bridged the gap, but she's still number three. So in terms of those rankings, she's really distanced herself from fourth and below where she was just barely ahead of them before. Now she's right up there with those top two. If she were to retain her U.S. Open title and make it three in a row, it might be enough. It may be enough to jump to number one. The difficult, the difficult thing about it is those top two players are so dominant that even when we do beat them, it's one of them we're beating in the finals. It's one of them we're beating in the semifinals. So they're still scoring a ton of points. We're just closing the gap on them slowly, but they're not struggling. They're not getting knocked out in round of 16s or quarterfinals. They're getting very, very deep into every tournament very consistently because of how much better they are compared to everybody else. And I'm still having the occasional tournament where I do get knocked out pretty dang early. I mean, we've been knocked out in the first round of tournaments even this year still, it does happen. We don't have the consistency because as good as I am, and uh, well, Montgomery is, and as limited as she is in the weaknesses department, she still doesn't have those dominant attributes that no matter who she goes up against, she would excel with. So those two opponents in particular tend to do a little bit better against us but you know even beyond that we're still not kind of a guarantee against most opponents getting there close on the verge but not quite but anyway obviously she's the only one we would expect to contend as we're looking at you know between 17th and 28th for those other four that are here meaning if they make it into the final 16 they're doing better than their rankings they're more likely to get knocked out in that round of 32 as we go to get the lay of the land here of the tournament and Swiatek already into the round of 64 of course with her number one seed Yamafinova already into the round of 64 Prepova there as well again I expect everybody to make it to the round of 32 but beyond that you don't know, right? But anyway, two things. One, uh, remaining content for this series, it's starting to back off a little bit. Now, for a long time, I've done twice a week. It's been Mondays and Fridays. It's going to hit and miss on the Mondays and Fridays for the remainder of this series. 
I honestly think we're kind of at the end of what there is to do. Sure, we could win some more Grand Slams. Sure, we have not reached number one in the rankings. It's possible we're going to reach that at the end of this episode. I would say it's unlikely that we're going to win back-to-back-to-back Grand Slams. And four out of five doesn't seem like that's bound to happen. But it could happen. But second thing is this series is nearly coming to an end. And that is because Rebound have gone from this being a mobile game into developing a PC slash Mac version of the game to now we're going to get back to backs. Now this is going to become a yearly release updated year on with new features. Now, as for the features for Tennis Manager 2022, I've seen a screenshot or two that make me go, okay, that's different than how it was. I think there's going to be a lot of UI improvements on on presentation style as they add more depth to to the presentation of your your athletes and of the tournaments and and things of that nature Uh, i would expect though nothing guaranteed nothing listed but i would i would expect them to have done some work on the 3d match engine to improve it it's not bad but it definitely has plenty of room for improvement and as it's new you figure they would have continued developing that from last year into year number two uh, on the title but at this stage they haven't listed any official new features compared to last year so hit and miss guesswork on on that matter Uh, the, the trailer is more about live action real life footage that it was about game content so uh, there's not a lot you can get out of the, the game trailer at this stage but anyway may 17th right around the corner just about one month from now is when that is set to release so for the next four to five weeks i would expect another seven or so episodes as we wrap this series up but then roll right into the new series when it releases with an extra episode or two in you know around that first week but then it'll it'll settle into the same monday friday release schedule that i have for this one and then of course we'll take a similar if not same approach to what i've done this year uh, starting from the bottom working our way up growing developing the academy i likely will continue to focus on the women's tour as it's a lot easier to get to know one group of athletes than both Uh, and i've long believed long felt that that women in sport are underserved underrepresented uh great example the mls as in major league soccer the men's soccer league in the united states uh their tv rights package is 90 million dollars they get 90 million the women's package is uh substantially less gosh what was the number um like three million three and a half million it's absurdly low in comparison absurdly low in comparison not even you know not even in the same wheelhouse we're, we're talking pennies on the dollar compared to the mls package yet out of the entire men's season the most watched match at this point is a hair under half a million viewers the women's season hasn't even officially gotten underway they're involved in like the equivalent of the league cup in england a lot of people know the league cup the league cup is not the fa cup (laughs) it's a smaller tournament there's two tournaments that that they play the challenge cup is a preseason tournament that is only in its third year now and it is 
born out of COVID, born out of things being shut down for a while, and them trying to get their way back into it with this little mini tournament. Anyway, short group stage, and then knockout tournament for the final four. It's not that big of a league. There's 12 teams uh, at this stage in the NWSL. Small, essentially preseason tournament ongoing. And it's most watched event so far match was about 435,000, where the men's was 490. As in almost the same almost the same amount of viewers and it's just a preseason challenge cup tournament and yet the money that they're bringing in is you know 40 50 times more and yet the difference is a couple percent in terms of viewership underrepresented underserved underpaid all of the above so a strong proponent, strong supporter, and that's one reason why I, I go that direction when I have the opportunity in a series. Why not? Why not? Anyway, so that's coming out. Look for it in just over a month's time. This series will wrap up as we roll into that, but in the meantime, I'll still have that handful of episodes as we continue on. Speaking of continuing on, Let's go ahead and look through the tournament roster and see where everybody falls in. So we've already seen Yema Fanova and Prepaova. As we now fall into first round action, Montgomery gets a qualifier and then a really easy path. That is not the same Elena Ita, is it? It's not the same Elena Ita, who's, yeah. It's a different spelling. It's a different Ita. Uh, Radicanu, looking like a round of 32 likely matchup for Montgomery. So at least she would get it to that point, but not beyond it. There's Krager and Lee. There's Ayala. Just inside the top 32 now. Looks like we are missing a few of the top 30 players. There's Nakunye. Fritova. Osaka, now down to 6th place in the rankings. Falling another spot outside of the top five for the first time. Wow, Kosinseva continues to fall. Holy crap, she is falling fast. She's down to 19th in the rankings now. From, I want to say, 6th, right? Just over a year ago. She is having a really rough year since leaving us. Rachel Gallus down at 200. What's going on? She's got a nice path into the round of 32, and then she'll have Goff most likely at that stage, which is definitely somebody beatable. That was somebody who was, we had her, what, up to 8th, I think it was. She hasn't fallen off too far, but she was our best player on paper when she left the team. Maybe Montgomery has caught her by now, but probably not. She's just the master of underperforming. Doesn't get more comfortable than that in the first round. Just one game lost. Yemifanova and Prepaova facing off in the round of 32, which sucks because we're guaranteed to lose somebody. But it's also good in the sense that we are guaranteed to get one past the point where we would have expected them to be. At 17th and 30th in the rankings, you figure they are both out in the round of 32, right? Top 16 move on. They're not in the top 16, even though Yema Fanova is right on the edge. But we are missing one of the top 16 from the tournament. And with that absence, Yema Fanova slots up just that little bit higher. And then fortunately for her, gets Prepa Ova, where guaranteed one of those two get into that round of 16, which is punching technically above our weight. So that's good. Second round was definitely not as easy, but still pretty comfortable. 6-4, 7-5, 6-2, 55% of points won. Clear on winners, though not massively. Unforced errors, also advantage of six. We make so many fewer, finally. We, we finally reached that stage with Montgomery. She's always been capable of 
beating people all but the that top five or so for a long time and then slowly we've become capable of beating them but she was always inconsistent her unforced errors would would come and go and it would decide matches now she just commits less than almost every opponent and that's because we took away all those weaknesses all right so Switek nearly knocked off by somebody outside of the top 100 Yema Finova has beaten Prepa Ova, so she will have to play Switek in the round of 16. You figure that's not going to go fairly well for her, as her ranking is absurdly high for what her actual skill is. She's developing very fast, but she is really outdoing herself to be that high in the rankings. Montgomery will play Radicanu in the round of 32. Same at the same time, you figure Montgomery is going to be heavily favored to win that one, but good job for Radicanu to get that far. Though I, I actually wouldn't mind the upset. It's good for Radicanu in her rankings. Ayala made it to the round of 32. For Fertova, we'll play Osaka in the round of 32. Gassenseva's still alive. Kim has made it this far. She'll play Goff, so that's going to be a tough one for her. But again, Goff, famous for underperforming. So she's got a tiny chance, but obviously we know how good goth is on paper and it's not even close kim's another one who is punching way above her weight as she develops really really fast Ooh, radicanu pushed us to the limit winning the first two sets requiring montgomery to win three straight following that taking it all the way to five and ultimately getting the win both of those first two sets going to the tie break before radicanu comes away with it and even on the three sets that we won, she won, what, nine games out of those three sets. It wasn't like we just went out and crushed her and took total control of the match. This thing was a tight contest. Radicanu with 93 winners. Wow, what a match. But, like I said, the unforced errors? Montgomery, still only 25 out of 344 points. Switek into the quarters, knocking off Yama Finova. Montgomery has actually a really easy match here. And she'll likely have Sabalenka in the quarterfinals, which means she's got a great chance to continue on deep into this tournament. But Sabalenka is certainly somebody capable of beating her. I mean, it's, it's not a given. Osaka is through... Kazantseva is through. Goff did get past Su Jung Kim. Only five games won for her. So uh, again, there's that, that huge gap between the two, even though in terms of ranking, they're not that far off from each other. Uh, there was a definite gap in quality. So that means we are down to just a single player, the one we expected, with Yemafonova now out, even though she did make it for the round of 16. It's down to Montgomery and... I like her path at least through the next couple of rounds, meaning she's got a great chance. Not like the last tournament, she's healthy. She's at the top of her form, I and mean, she's got everything going for her right now. She's already faced some adversity, and that Radicanu pushed her to the brink, but she overcame that like a champion does. So looking really good at this stage. Speaking of at this stage... I'm going to go ahead and throw a cliffhanger at you. We're going to wrap this episode up right here. We will continue on, obviously, with the U.S. Open next time. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.